Whether you care primarily about gaming or you're a content creator and you care about productivity, the one thing that you're definitely going to want to have is going to be to have the new Ryzen 7000 series. So generally, when we think before the series, uh, Ryzen's have, AMD has been quote unquote the cheaper <laughs> Intel. Uh, but with the Ryzen, so starting with the 1000 series, then really with the 2000, 3000, and then with the 5000 series, um, they really made huge leaps in terms of more cores and it was always more productive at a better value. But with the more recent series, and especially with the 5800 uh, 3D, um, it's actually been better for gaming as well. So with the 7000, it is a new generation. It literally just got released about less than a week ago from when I'm making this video. Um, and it's the new 7000 series. Right now we have four different processors. The 7950, uh, which is going to be a 16 core. Uh, we have the 7900, which is a 12 core. We have what I have here, the Ryzen 7 7700X, which is an eight core to replace my old existing 2700X. Um, and then we have the 7600, uh, which is the six core processor. Um, now, the biggest change with these new processors is that uh, while AMD has always been more productive when you're using multi-core on a single core applications, they've generally faltered a little bit. And that's why a lot of content creators on Premiere, um, they primarily went with Intel processors until most recently when Premiere started using multi-cores. Um, with DaVinci and Vegas, they do use for CPU encoding uh, they do use multi-cores, which is going to be a lot better right now. And if you're doing any type of 3D modeling, um, Ryzen's have always been the way to go. Uh, but with the 7000 series, the other thing they did was they also increased the single core performance and the clock speeds. And that's why whether you're gaming or you're looking for productivity, the 7000 series is a fantastic upgrade. Now, the only downside to the 7000 series so far is that... It is going to, it's not a simple upgrade. So for example, if you had a 2700 series, you can upgrade to the third generation 3000 or the fourth generation 5000. Uh, most of those motherboards did support the newer chipsets with sometimes with a BIOS update um, because they all use the AM4, uh, AM4 chipset, sorry, AM4 socket. Uh, with the various Zen architectures. Uh, this does use a new socket, uh, which is an AM5. So with that, it's not necessarily going to be a straightforward upgrade because at a minimum, um, you would need, besides the new processor, you would need a brand new motherboard and you would need um, new RAM, such as what I picked up here, which is the G-Skill DDR5 RAM. Uh, the good news is if you already have a good all-in-one water cooler or good fan, um, you can reuse those as well. Um, now, the big thing with the AM5s is that it is going to, with the Ryzen 7000 series, it is going to support PCI Express 5.0. Uh, so the new Radeons, which are just soon to be launched, the new graphics cards, those possibly should support that as well. Um, and then more importantly for storage as a content creator, I'm really excited about it because the new PCI Express 5.0 and NVMEs are going to be blazing fast. Um, so transferring data back and forth is going to be good. Now, uh, with the Ryzen 7000 series, if you do make the upgrade right now, uh, the good news is they are going to support it for the next few years. So uh, you can start out with this, and then when you want to make an upgrade, you'll be able to upgrade later on, probably just by swapping out the CPU. Everything else is going to work, including the motherboard and the memory, because basically we're just at the start of ddr5 memory to begin with as well um, now another really nice thing feature with the ryzen 7000 series is because they have expo profile so it'll work with memory go into the bios and it'll instantly control overclocking so if you're gaming that's going to be very nice and easy um, the one thing to note is uh, to make sure you have really good cooling because uh, with these new processors, the one of the rays we're able to get higher clock speeds is that they are um, increasing the temperatures on these. So these, so with the Ryzen 7000 series, they will boost themselves up to 
95 up to 95 degrees Celsius, uh, significantly hotter than a lot of the older Ryzen uh, 5000 series. So if you have a good all-in-one water cooler, it'll generally be very good, but um, if you have a stock really old dinky fan, you probably might want to upgrade that as well. Um, so the AM5, this is the Ryzen 7 7700X. Uh, we have 5.4 gigahertz max boost with a 4.5 gigahertz base clock, which is significantly faster than the old um, seven uh, than the old seven series. Uh, 40 megabytes of cache. Now the other thing that you might notice is that starting with the 7000 series, um, pretty expensive processor, but they don't come with any type of cooling solution. No more fans. Um, so I've, when I purchased my 2700X, and I believe. Um, even with the 3000 series and possibly the 5000 series, you were able to get it with a type of a fan or a cooling solution. You don't have that with these, so you do want to make sure that you are going to budget for that as well. So, if you're looking for the latest and greatest and you want to uh, either get ahead up on your competition or improve your productivity because time is money, uh, do take a look at the Ryzen 7000 series and what we have here is the Ryzen 7 7700X. Should have the motherboard very soon. We'll have more detailed videos on those, including um, some actual benchmarks and clock speeds and how it fits into the productivity. But for now, this is what you can expect with the Ryzen 7 7700X.